you know on most sailboats 33 feet and under there's no hot water heater why I'm not sure probably a space type of thing but it makes it difficult to do the dishes and some other normal tasks well I've got room on this boat and I'm adding a six gallon water heater to my sailboat and I'm working with Camco manufacturing and Kuma products they make a very simple but yet efficient water heater the heat exchanger is double walled to help prevent against any water contamination or engine overheating you know if something should happen I don't think anything will the units also all aluminum so there's no cross metal galvanic uh, corrosion for extended life and there's a wide range of sizes from 6 gallon to 20 gallon now there are a few important parts to keep in mind when installing the heater so to make sure I'm doing things right I'm gonna check with Ed the service manager and an ABYC certified tech at the sailing emporium. Okay, now on the uh, the water fittings for the water heater. Okay, for the uh, for the engine fittings, you want to use uh, nice brass uh, fittings. Uh, you got to remember that these are going into the engine where it's going to run 185, 190 degrees all the time, so, and you want to make sure it's uh, sealed properly around the threads to keep uh, leakage. You don't want to lose your cooling out. And then on the uh, hot water on the water heater itself, on the water going into it, the fresh water, uh, you want to use uh, a good. Uh, you can use plastic or brass. Uh, if you use the plastic, make sure you use the, the gray plastic. It's a lot sturdier. And you just got to remember that water heater is going to get up to about 180 degrees, so you don't want to use the white plastic. It'll, it'll soften up and, and, and rot out on you quicker and deteriorate on you, okay? As far as hoses, okay, you can use the, the clear reinforced hose for the cold water side. This is the water that's going from the water pump to the water heater. Okay, but on the hot water side, you want to make sure you use a good uh, reinforced uh, hose, like this tracer hose with a red and uh, blue tracer. It is rated for hot water. Uh, also, you have uh, you want to use a nice, good stainless hose clamp on all your fittings. This is on the engine, on the hot water heater itself, as far as the coolant lines going in and out, and also on the pressure lines. And also, to get your hoses on the, the fittings on the water heater and the engine, you can use a, a heat gun to, to soften up the material to get it on the, uh, the fittings. Okay, as far as the hose for the uh, water heater itself, going from the engine to the water heater, you want to use a good uh, rated uh, water heater hose. Uh, you just don't want to use any old garden hose or something like that on it because this, this uh, coolant that's circulating through this and around the water heater will get up to whatever the engine temperature is. Most time it's going to run it at 180, 190, but if the engine should overheat, you got to figure this coolant's also going to get up to 200, 210 degrees. So you want to make sure you use a good reinforced uh, heater hose. All right, now Ed, where am I going to hook up the coolant lines to heat the hot water heater on this engine? Okay, the coolant coming out of the engine, you will plug into here. There's a, a, a plug right here. You can take that out. And like I said, screw in one of these nice uh, brass fittings and make sure you put some thread seal or tape on the uh, threads to seal it up. The water will come, the coolant will come out of the engine here. You'll just come straight out. Uh, your hose will go back to the hot water heater. And then you'll have another hose that comes from the other side of the water heater back into the engine. And that you will put in right here. Uh, take this plug out. And since this is uh, low clearance here with the cockpit, on this one, you know, I'll put a 90 in here. And that way the hose will just come in straight from the back and curl right in, right into the fitting right here. Uh, like I say, make sure you put thread lock tape on everything and uh, use nice uh, stainless steel hose clamps on both of those fittings. Now what about the coolant? How much coolant am I going to have to add to this? Well, when you take these out, you are going to lose some coolant, probably a pint or so. But overall, you will probably have to add about a half a gallon of coolant to the, uh, to the engine to uh, get the engine filled back up to its proper level. All right, so now, Ed, after I've got all this hooked up, I run the engine for 15, 20 minutes. Uh, if the engine alarm doesn't go off, I still need to add coolant, though, correct? Yes. And now I have a... Um, a reservoir. Do I add it to the reservoir or do I add it directly to the engine? You can add it right to the reservoir and make sure that uh, if your boat is not equipped with an with engine expansion tank uh, you should have one of those installed because uh, that needs to be higher than the water heater and the engine itself so that way all the air bubbles that may get trapped in the water heater will work its way out through the reservoir. I was able to locate the tank in the center of the engine compartment 
but I needed to install a couple of braces to attach the heater to and to make it level. Now I epoxied the boards first, then fiberglassed them into the place. And when attaching the tank uh, to your boards, be mindful of the length of the screws or bolts you're using. You don't want to go through the hull. Next I attach the fresh water hoses first to my faucet and be sure the hoses are pushed all the way onto the fittings. Then I attach the hoses to the water tank. And on the engine, make sure the fittings are nice and tight and that the hoses are fully uh, installed over the uh, barbed fittings. This may take a little bit of coaxing and some pushing. Now another thing Eddie mentioned about wiring this up is to use a 12-3 marine grade wiring and the difference here is you see it's individual strands and it's tinned and even the ground wire is shielded uh, compared to household wire where it's solid and most of the time the uh, ground is not shielded. You need this to hold up against the harsh marine environment. Now on the electric cover for the water heater, add a strain relief fitting for the electrical wires. Now I attach the connectors uh, to the wires, then connect the ground to the ground on the inside of the access cover, not to the grounding circuit. Of course, then black to black, and the white to the lower heat element. And safety first, before connecting the heater to the electric panel, be sure the power is off. And use eye connectors, as they're more secure. The black wire will go to the breaker, the white to the neutral bus bar, and the green to the grounding bus bar. Well now I have everything installed and what I did on the um, cold water was I also added a um, check valve so the old water only goes in doesn't come back out as you're out rocking around uh, sailing. Important, very important. Be sure the water heater is full before turning on the electric. Then I checked all the fittings for leaks. All looked good. switched on the electric heat and I was soon in hot water. Now if you have any questions or if you're not sure of something, be sure to check with the professionals or have this professionally installed. On a side note, small amounts of DC electric current you know, do move between the boat and the shore. So to prevent uh, any galvanic damage, it's recommended that you also hook up a galvanic isolator.